Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Environmental Organic Chemistry with Dr. Lisa. I'm going to do an, an example problem for you today where you calculate the change in solubility of a chemical, uh, but you're calculating across the melting point of the chemical. So let's say we have our chemical and we look up the solubility, say, right about there, uh, and that happens to be 25 degrees Celsius. So that's the temperature we can look up. But let's say we want to calculate the solubility down here at, say, 3 degrees Celsius, and the melting point is in the middle, right? We want to calculate what happens uh, to the, the compound, um, even though we're going across the melting point. And so what a lot of people did, unfortunately, I guess, is they started here and they just used this equation, which in includes the delta H of fusion. And they, oh, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> I'm not very good with one note, sorry. But basically what they did is they calculated, this is supposed to be a straight line here, okay? So trust me, they calculated a straight line that's you know perfectly parallel to the solid line because they're using the same slope, but you're starting from the wrong spot. So you would be calculating your solubility as though it was down here, which is not correct. But what you need to do is first calculate the solubility at the melting point right here using the equation for the liquid, and then calculate this part of the curve where you go from the melting point down to your three degrees Celsius or whatever your temperature is using this equation for a solid, which includes delta H of fusion. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do here. Here's our example problem. I've decided to use cyclohexane as my example chemical because cyclohexane has a melting point of 6.45 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if I look up the solubility of this chemical here, I looked it up on EpiSuite. I have it here in milligrams per liter and also in molar units. If I look it up, this is what I get, but this is at 25 degrees C, right? At 25 C. Uh, and now I wanna calculate the solubility of the chemical all the way down at three degrees Celsius. And again, the melting point is in between. So the chemical is becoming a solid in here. So how do I do this? Well, I have my equations here, right? I know that I can calculate uh, in the liquid region, the slope that I'm going to use is the HEW, that's the excess enthalpy involved in dissolving the chemical in water from its pure liquid phase into water. And then, of course, delta H effusion is the um, energy required to melt the solid, right? And remember, when you have this natural log of a ratio, I could write this as natural log of CSAT T2 minus natural log of CSAT T1. So I could move the natural log of CSAT T1 over here with a plus sign and write the equation this way, right? So I would use this form of the equation. Now to do this, of course, I need to know what HEW and delta H effusion are. So for cyclohexane, I mean, one of the reasons I picked it is because I can actually look up the delta H effusion from the NIST web book. So that's nice. Uh, but the HEW term is trickier. I went to the UFZ LSER data set here. Uh, here's the website here if you want to go look at it. Remember, this is what we've used in class to, to look at the physical and chemical properties of a lot of chemicals. Here's the, the page for cyclohexane. And if I scroll down, it has the delta H terms here. Here's some delta H predictions. Oops, just closed it. There we go, delta H predictions. And you notice that it has one for, if I keep scrolling down, it's got for the air to water bulk phase partitioning. So it's got delta H A W is what I would call it, right? So I was able to download that. And my delta H A W was 28.78 kilojoules per mole. And I know that my delta H of vaporization is 33.34 kilojoules per mole. And I know that the HEW should be the difference between those two numbers. So I'm able to calculate HEW by just subtracting one from the other. And my HEW term is about four and a half kilojoules per mole. Now, not all chemicals are this easy. Sometimes you just have to make an educated guess about what HEW is. But if you're lucky, like I am with this chemical, you can look up HAW, you can look up delta H of vaporization, and the difference between the two will be your HEW term. So first let's do the step where we calculate from 25 to six and a half degrees Celsius. Okay, so 25 degrees Celsius, we already know what the solubility is. I'm gonna use molar units here. Now I wanna calculate the solubility at six and a half degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna use uh, this equation right here. Okay, so equals 
exp because this equation is going to give me the natural log. So I'm going to exp this whole thing. So this is going to be hew here divided by r. Notice that I'm using r. I've done the 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole. So the kilojoules per mole Kelvin here cancels with kilojoules per mole here. And I'm left with only Kelvin, which will get uh, canceled out when I do the 1 over t times. OK, and then this is the tricky part. we got to make sure we don't get t1 and t2 confused. So t2 is the, the temperature we're aiming at. t1 is the temperature we started. So sorry, hold on. Put some parentheses there. t1 minus t2 plus natural log of the solubility at 25 degrees C, close parentheses, and that should give us our number. So, okay, what happened here? Wait a minute, my temperature went down, but my solubility went up. That tells me I got a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Could be a parentheses thing. I'm not exactly sure what the problem is here, to be honest. So I'm gonna put some parentheses in, see if I can fix it that way. It's not gonna do it for me. There we, no, no, still wrong. So what did we do wrong here? Let's see if we can figure this out. Is it a problem of T1 minus T2? Uh, yep, okay, that's what we did wrong. This should be, I just clicked on the wrong cell here. There we go. That should be, this one should be, there we go. So that's a cautionary tale about how you always have to check your numbers, check your math, right? Okay, now, yay, my solubility has gone down which is what it should be doing. Now we didn't go down a lot. We only went down by about 20 degrees, but solubility should be going down. If you're not seeing any change at all, it's probably because you have units of, of uh, joules per mole Kelvin here, but kilojoules per mole here, and that screws everything up. So check your units, but you should see some decrease in solubility. Okay, so here's the solubility at the melting point. Now we wanna calculate the solubility at three degrees Celsius. Now we're going to use this form of the equation where we have to take delta H of fusion into account. Okay, so again, we're going to do E equals EXP of this big thing. I'm going to put some parentheses in here. Uh, so it's going to be delta H of EW plus delta H of fusion divided by R times T1, which is this one minus T2 plus, sorry, plus LN of the solubility. We just calculated up here, right there. Close some parentheses here. And again, you see that the solubility went down, which is what should happen. The temperature is going down, the solubility should go down as long as these HEW terms and the delta H effusion are positive. Delta, delta H effusion will always be positive, but there might be some circumstances where HEW could be negative. It could happen. Um, but as long as that's positive, then the solubility should go, be going down as the temperature goes down for solids and liquids. Um, and so we can feel comfortable that we got the right re result here. If it wasn't going down, if we did this calculation and we saw that the delta H, or excuse me, the solubility didn't go down, then your first guess would probably be that you got T1 and T2 backwards. So go check that first, then check the signs up here, make sure that these are positive. If these delta H terms are positive, then your solubility should be going down as temperature goes down. So that's how you calculate the change in solubility, even incorporating the fact that you've moved past the melting point.